Hello, I uh, just wanted to give you a quick overview on how to calibrate a watt meter. Uh, this might help somebody out there. I didn't find a lot of information on it when I was looking on the internet. So uh, anyway, our specimen is a, a watt meter uh, Dosi TR1000. Um, this particular meter has two watt ranges, uh, 30 watt and a 1000 watt. Uh, different meters will have different ranges, but um, same basic principles here. Um, you can do this with basic tools. It's it's really not complicated. Um, so first off, whatever tools you need to take the cover off, which this cover had four flathead screws on it. And I have already removed those for ease of use. So now we're looking at the gut sever. Uh, most important thing that you're going to have to have to do this is another meter and it needs to be a meter that has already been proven accurate or uh, you know at least shows what you want it to show you can set these things however you want them to lie and they'll all lie a little bit none of them are a hundred percent accurate um, basically this is pretty pretty easy going stuff here you have the selector switch right here. Okay, right now we're on a 30 watt setting. So, we follow this in to the back side of that switch and it's not going to show on here, but uh, you can tell where that setting is making contact and trace that wire back to the board. Uh, on this particular meter, that is the yellow wire. Okay, we follow the yellow wire and, oh, it goes to a pot that is adjustable. Imagine that. Now, there's going to be a pot for every one of those watt range settings. Uh, probably what you should do before you get to turning that pot is get a baseline on your radio with your good watt meter get a dead key write it down and then modulate into it and see what it modulates up to now that's the information that we're going to transfer onto the new meter once you have your dead key you're going to go into this pot with a little itty bitty screwdriver these little guys right here work great. You can get them at Dollar General, and guess what? They're a dollar. So you can't beat that. They're priceless if you're going to work on this stuff. Anyway, you have your baseline dead key. Now, if your meter does not show that when you key it up, the one you're working on you now you're obviously going to be switching your coax back and forth between the two meters I'm assuming we know that uh, what you will do is insert your screwdriver in that pot and turn it so that the meter will display the correct dead key and once you do that you can try to modulate through it and your modulation number on the meter you're working on should be the same as your baseline meter. Oh, there. If it isn't, then it's just probably a different in manufacturers, but it will be close. So, that is uh, basically what you're going to do with each watt setting. Um, we'll, we'll run through it again on this one. We'll go up to the 1,000 watt setting, okay? And again, my little camera is not going to show that contactor. Well, it almost does. But that is the purple wire. Okay, trace the purple wire back to the board. And there it is. It goes to another pot. This one's black. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, same deal. 
Uh, now you're not going to use the higher settings unless you're running some kind of a power amplifier. If you're running a power amplifier, I would do this, the exact same sequence of events. Get a dead key baseline with your linear on and how much it swings up under modulation. Same deal. Set that pot with the power on, dead key, and under modulation. See how much it swings up. Should be the same number. Uh, that's pretty much a basic overview. I hope this helps somebody. Um, good luck, guys.